Darktable is my go-to choice when it comes to editing photos and I've uploaded well over 100 videos about it. However, I've never showed you how easy it is to navigate through the different menus and modules using shortcuts. My name is Rico Richardson and in this video I'm going to tell you all about that. Much of the functionality of Darktable can be accessed via shortcuts using the keyboard or keyboard mouse combinations. These shortcuts are user configurable via the shortcuts tab. Many important shortcut actions are provided with default key combinations, but most must be manually configured by the user. Any key may be used for a keyboard shortcut and may be combined with the shift control or alt modifier keys or any combination thereof. When you open the shortcuts tab, you are initially presented with a hierarchical list of all actions that can be applied with a keyboard shortcut. You can add or amend a shortcut and in order to do so, you need to first navigate to the action you want to change and then double click on it. You will be prompted to press the new key combination to be mapped to the selected action. If a conflict is found, you will be given the option to retain the existing shortcut or to replace it. Depending on context, it is possible to use the same keyboard shortcut for multiple actions. So for example, the same key combination may be used for one action in the light table view and another in the dark room view. This tutorial will consist of two areas when it comes to shortcuts. The first one is general shortcuts and the second one will be shortcuts dedicated to clean up your workspace and that will help you work on your image. So let's start with the general shortcuts. Regardless of the menu that you're in, you can have an overview of all the available shortcuts by pressing the letter H. This will show you four different topics. The first is everything that has to do with your mouse. The second are shortcuts that are globally available. The third is all the shortcuts that have to do with the light table. And the last one have to do with the utility modules. If you hover over the photo and press the D, this will open up that specific photo in the dark room. So let's say I have this specific photo and now press D on my keyboard. You see that I'm being taken to the dark room and I can work on this image. If I pick the wrong image or if I'm done working on this photo and I want to find the next one, pressing L on the keyboard will take me back to the Lightroom where I can then go and find the next photo. Now let's say you want to scroll through your images as you would with the Microsoft Photo app for instance. Because you want to have a full view of the image so that it will help you decide more easily which photo to work on. All you have to do is press Alt W. This will open up the photo on your entire screen. You can then proceed to navigate your photos using the arrow keys. You could press F11 for a full screen, but it will only make Darktable full screen and not the entire photo. You can also rate your photos. This can be done by using the numbers 1 to 5 or the 0 to go back to default. This will give you the corresponding amount of stars of an image. When pressing R, this will rate your image as rejected. Another thing you can do is label your photos with a color. This can be done by using the buttons F1 to F5. And the fun part about this is that you can give a photo several color labels so no color needs to feel left out. Now on to the next shortcuts. Those are dedicated to clean up your workspace and to help you work on your image. Another way to take full advantage over your screen is by pressing the tab button. This will remove all the side and top panels and will only show you the photos when you're in the Lightroom. When you use this button in the dark room, it will remove all panels as well, giving you a much cleaner workspace. Now let's say you want all the tabs to disappear, but you still want to see the film strip. You can press Ctrl F and the film strip will appear. There is a bug with this though, because if you press tab and then pull up the film strip, you can remove the film strip again by pressing tab, but by pressing it again, none of your panels will come back. Not even if you remove the film strip first with Ctrl F and then proceed to click Tab. Keep this in mind because by doing so you'll need to manually pull up all the side and top panels again. The same goes for adding or removing the side or top bars individually after pressing Tab. I'm not sure why that is but I'll make a GitHub report about it to let the developers know. When you work on your image you want things to be in focus. But you want to be sure that you have the things in focus that you want to be in focus too. Meet the next shortcut, Ctrl Shift F, the shortcut for focus peaking. Focus peaking works by filtering out image noise, measuring the intensity gradients in the image and calculating average and standard deviation statistics. When the gradient of an edge differs significantly from the mean, the associated pixels are marked with a heat map indicating how sharp the edge is. When using this shortcut you will see three colors appear. These colors are blue, 
green and yellow. Yellow represents a large jump in gradient indicating a very sharp edge. Green represents a medium jump in gradient indicating a reasonably sharp edge. Blue represents a small jump in gradient indicating a slightly sharp edge. Another thing I regularly check when working on an image is to see whether or not the highlights or shadows are clipped. Clipping highlights are shown with a red color and clipping shadows are shown with a blue color when you toggle the overexposed indicator on and off. You can do this by pressing O on your keyboard when you're in the Lightroom. That way you will see red and blue or just one of them pop up and know what's addressing your image. It's a great way to make sure that the highlights and shadows aren't being clipped and crushed. Unless, of course, that's meant for artistic purposes. The next shortcut has to do with masks. Let's say you have an image and you want to target a specific area. You can add a mask for that. Darktable allows you to use all kinds of masks, but in this example we're going to use the drawn mask and a brush. Because the brush size can be changed with the angle brackets. You can make it bigger and you can make it smaller. This also can be done with the mouse by scrolling away and towards you, but using the parenthesis you can increase the hardness of a brush or better known as the feathering. If you want to do this with your mouse, you'll need to hold the shift button and scroll the mouse wheel away or towards you. The opacity of a brush can't be changed in the menu. You can change the opacity of the module itself, but not that of a brush. I actually never knew this was possible, so when I wrote the script for this video, I was pleasantly surprised to find out about this possibility. On your keyboard, you'll have to use a greater than or the smaller than keys. They will help you increase or decrease the opacity of your brush, which makes it possible to do much more subtle changes to an image. The same thing can be achieved with the mouse by holding control and then scrolling the mouse wheel button away or towards you. So you basically have the option to do this with your keys or with your mouse. These shortcuts can come in handy when you're using a graphics tablet with a pen for instance, instead of a mouse. Now onto the final shortcut. Once you've imported a new library and you work on that, there is a possibility to switch back to the previous library. The shortcut for that is Ctrl K. This will allow you to easily switch between libraries. Pressing Ctrl K again will take you back to the previous one. So it won't take you back two libraries from where you were working on, but it allows you to switch between library 1 and library 2. And that's it for this video. 